Hi guys and welcome back and welcome to this what I believe will be a two-part series on the classic pass. So in this first video we will be talking about the basic grips and the basic technique of the pass and then we will continue to go over the different kind of passes, the different covers. So what is sometimes referred to as the riffle pass or the dribble pass or the wiggle pass we will address in the next video. Now if you're new here you should know that we are right now we're going through this book the royal road to card magic on this channel we're going through more or less every little trick and every little technique and now we reach the pass chapter so this book is great for beginners and experts and this will give you a very strong foundation obviously you don't need the book to participate because i'm going to show everything to you but now is the perfect time to actually subscribe and follow along this journey now before starting i should also say that i have a pretty pragmatic view when it comes to these kind of moves and I do what works in a performance setting and maybe not that well on the camera. I'm not a technician like that. Some people spend an unproportionate amount of time on perfecting their pass and of course we should also always strive to perfect our moves but I will show you something that I think works in the real world so I hope that appeals to you. Now the pass of course is a very old move we can of course say when it was you know who invented it or when basically but it's been in the literature since the uh, 1800s at least probably or most definitely it's from the gambling table it was done to nullify cut so if someone cut the deck after you shuffled it they would uh, destroy your setup obviously but if you did the pass you would you know nullify that and be back where you started now the pass is one of the most mystified moves in card magic. Uh, in the Royal Road to Card Magic they say that back in the day you know they said that if you didn't know the pass you, you couldn't do card magic you needed to start with the pass basically because everything was built upon the pass. Obviously that is not true we've done a lot of videos now without using the pass of course. The pass is pretty hard to learn and it's not completely necessary. They also used to you know compete who could do the most passes in a minute and they would do it really fast and of course that is all nonsense you don't need that you need one good pass you know to control a selection to the top or whatever you need to do so it used to be to nullify cut now of course it's as a control to very quickly and very efficiently control their card to the top and although you don't need the pass, you could do double undercuts, you can do all kind of false shuffles or different controls. You know, the pass is pretty unique in a way because it gives the impression that a card is selected and then it's returned and then it's just left there. And you know, you do nothing to the deck. That is the impression it's supposed to, to leave. Of course you do something, you do the pass, you control it to the top. Few controls have that kind of impression for the, to the audience. Maybe only the side steal I can think of. So in that way the pass is pretty unique and well worth to learn. Okay, so let's jump straight into it and let's learn the pass together. Okay guys, so here we are. I hope this angle works better for you than it does for me. <laughs> this is quite awkward for me, so you have to bear with me if uh, I'm a bit <laughs> awkward in my movement. But this is better for learning, right? Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. Now, when you've done a move for a long time, you're gonna start to personalize it and, you know, change it up a little bit, depending on who you are, your hands, your style, and everything like that. But I will try to teach you like a basic, grip and then we will also talk about how to kind of personalize it a little bit and you can experiment a little bit to find what works for you because a knacky move like this they don't look the same in everyone's hands they're pretty different depending on who you are and your different traits so the classic pass from behind i guess it's, it looks something like this from this exposed view so this is what we are dealing with right now so for the grip we're gonna start with having a break and we're not gonna have, you know, our usual pinky break, which is just a little bit of flesh in that break. Instead, we're actually going to stick out, stick in all the way, at least to the first joint, sometimes even, even more, okay? But that break is covered because on this side, you need to, you know, keep the halves together. And you're also gonna have your thumb here. And from the front, you're gonna have your fingers and from the right you have your hand obviously so that gets sticked in there now for the thumb usually when you begin you're probably going to want to have it right here along this left side 
And these three fingers are like this on the right side. Some people prefer to have their index finger over here, but I usually have it over here. Okay, and these, especially these two fingers, the ring finger and the middle finger is clamping down on that top pack. So it looks, you have a really, you know, <laughs> a hard grip, but it's only for a second, okay? And for the right hand, it's basically holding the deck in end grips, but it's only holding the bottom packet. Okay, so let's remove that for a moment. So it's only hold, holding the bottom packet. So you can even imagine having a screw go from your thumb to your middle finger over here. Okay, so it's holding it tightly, the bottom packet, okay? Only the bottom packet. Obviously it contacts uh, the edges, but it's only holding the bottom packet. So what's going to happen is this. You're going to use your fingers here, and you're going to extend them. And by doing that, try to do this in a more exposed way, you're going to start to drag the top packet to the right, okay? So by using as I said, you stick in, stick it in there quite some, some uh, length. <laughs> and on the top, you have these two fingers clamping down. Okay? So what you're basically going to do is this. Okay? So that's going to be the top packet. So in slow motion, what's happening, you clamp down and you start to drag the top packet to the right. Okay? And it will start coming down. And from here, it will be, you know, parallel to the walls, basically, for a moment. And then it will clear the top packet and it will fold inwards. And the two packets are squared up. So it gets dragged around like so, all the way like so. So let's do that one more time. Okay, thumb here. The right hand is holding the bottom packet over here. And these fingers are really clamping that top packet. And what you're going to do, as I said, you drag that to the right until it's parallel to the walls. And then you keep dragging it down until it clears and comes back together like so. So you're going to have to practice that quite a lot, getting that top packet around, okay? But there's another, in my opinion, important part of this that is often missed by people. And I think this is important. So what you're going to do actually with, this is now the bottom packet. As I said, you're holding only the bottom packet with your right hand. And what is going to happen is you're going to use primarily your ring finger to kind of hinge that upwards a little bit. It's kind of hard to do with only that packet but it's going to be hinged upwards, okay? So from this side, it's going to look a little bit like this. And what this allows you to do is when you drag that packet, like here, instead of dropping that all the way, which can be a, you know, a long way, you actually hinge this other packet, which was on the bottom until recently, upwards. So it clears a lot easier and then you fold this in and you square everything up. So what these fingers are doing is that they're, as I said, they're hinging that upwards. That will give you a little bit more finger fluttering from the front, but on the other hand, you won't have to drop this packet so far and it won't be that hard to get them to clear, okay? So I think it's worth it. So what's important from the front is that you keep your index finger and little finger together when you do that hinging. So you don't do this, for example, where you kind of, you know, stretch it out or s separate them. Instead, you try to really keep them together as much as you can, okay? Another thing worth mentioning when you're doing this from the front is to make sure to watch your index finger. I have had problems with this. I did this until recently when I started to research this video a little bit because I knew this video was coming. So I paid more and more attention to my past. But what you don't want to do or what you don't want to see is that index finger extending like this when you drag that packet. 
You don't want to extend your index finger because that is going to flash a lot from the front. What you want to do is you want to keep it gripping that top packet, not extending it. Or you could, and this is something I have been doing recently, experimenting with, have that finger curled underneath and then you really won't flash it, whatever you do. So let's go through it all one more time. So the card you're going to pass to the top, you are holding a break above it, okay? And you're holding a big break, clamping down with these three fingers, if you want them all there, and having your thumb over here at this side, okay? And you grab only the bottom packet with your right hand. Now you can have this finger extended or curled in like this. And now you're gonna start to drag that top packet to the right and down. And when you're about here, you're going to hinge this packet, the top packet upwards with your right ring finger and little finger. And the bottom packet is curled inwards and then you square everything up. And this might seem hard and it is pretty hard and it will take practice, you know. You are going to drop the cards many times and you're going to have, you know, cramps in your hands and so on. So it's going to take some work, but it's, as I said, I think it's going to be worth it. So that is the basic technique. Now you could experiment with this a little bit. So one way of experimenting because it's okay if it looks a little bit different from other people's because they all look different. You need to find what's comfortable for you, but still, you know, looks good. So the, the first thing I would experiment with is where you have your thumb. In the beginning, you're gonna try to have it maybe parallel like this. You could also try to have it more in the middle of, uh, of the packs like so, and try that. Actually, personally, I have it all the way over here in the back, usually. Uh, I, I find that most comfortable for me. But you know, experiment with it. That's one way of experimenting. The other way, you want to experiment with your left index finger. Do you want it in front? Do you want it on the right side, like this? Or do you want it like I usually do it nowadays, curled underneath? This is how Derek Dingle did it. He had it curled underneath like this, and he had his thumb back here. And I kind of liked that, and he was very famous for his pass. So experiment with that. Also experiment with your right index finger. Do you want it in front like this? Do you want it curled in like this? And also, when it comes to your left thumb, do you want it like this or do you want it more like this? Some people like to have it across like this instead. So these are all ways you can experiment and see what's comfortable for you. Once you find what's good for you, you want to, you know, practice doing that over and over again. This basic movement like this. And then you want to practice it as you, for example, spread your cards, spread the cards like this. Because you, that's more how you're going to do it in real life and, you know, come together and do the pass. So begin practicing the basic action and then practice different ways which more corresponds to reality. Okay guys, I hope that explanation was at least a little bit helpful. You know, the pass is a knacky move, it's hard and it's going to take a lot of trial and error and, you know, some experimentation to get it down. So don't be disheartened if you don't get it <laughs> straight away, because nobody does. You're gonna drop the cards a lot, you're gonna have sore fingers and hands. So, you know, make sure when, when you start to get too frustrated, take a break, get back to it later, you know. And then, you know, sit when you're watching TV or on the bus or whatever, and just do the pass over and over again, you know. And uh, that is the way I think is the best to learn once you've got the basic grip down. Now, an important point when it comes to the pass is that it isn't completely burnable from all angles, you know? In most cases, you definitely are going to need some kind of misdirection, okay? If you're just gonna do a basic, you know, pass right in front of them, you're gonna have to have a, a very impressive speed or something. And speed isn't most important, to be honest. It's better to practice your misdirection, at least in the beginning. But I mean, I, I still use misdirection when I do the pass and I think most people do. Some basic misdirection, they pick a card, they return it, you know, and then you, you just ask them. You, you look them in the eye and you say, okay, will you remember that card now? And then you do the pass. And maybe you saw here that I didn't do it very quickly or something like that. Because speed, as I said, isn't the most important factor when it comes to the pass. It's more important, for example, the sound, the noise. 
you want to avoid scraping that packet you know, against each other, have a noisy pass. You don't want that. So you want to practice that and you want it to be smooth. And above all, you want it to be, you know, relaxed. It's very easy in the beginning to tense up a lot and then, you know, do the pass very tensely. And they will see that in your entire body language. That is something to really look out for and really practice to be relaxed in your hands and in the rest of your body as you're performing the pass, okay? Speed will come eventually, okay? But don't worry too much about that in the beginning. So as I said, in the next video, we are going to talk about some more, uh, you know, advanced covers for the pass. We're going to talk about the riffle pass and the dribble pass and, you know, some, some covers like that. But I want to give you something today. So apart from misdirection, which is very important, you know, even with a very good pass, they will know that you're doing something. He did something there, something sneaky. So you want to cover that. So um, one very basic way, as I said, the more advanced will be the next video. But a, a more basic way is to cover it in the action of simply squaring up the deck. So you do the pass and then you square it up like this. And it's best, of course, maybe if you do it after you have uh, dribbled or after you, you've had a spread like this, you know, because it makes more sense to, you know, square up the deck when it's not squared from the beginning, of course. Another way of doing it is to move your body. So maybe you start with a person here, you, he selects a, a card, he turns it back, and then you address the next person. And as you move your body, you do the pass. You know, and you know, even though the camera might well, obviously will pick that up, it's a lot harder for the human eye. It's what I was saying before the space ran out, even though the camera might be able to pick this up, it's a lot harder for the human eye to actually pick it up in a real life performance. Another way of covering the pass is instead of moving it like this, you can actually move it from up to down as well. And uh, some people like to do a little dip, a little dipping motion. Uh, when they do the pass. That also gives quite a lot of cover. So make sure to, you know, experiment in front of a mirror to work out the angles. I think the best angle is from the top, looking down on the deck. Another thing about the pass that I should mention is that I don't like doing the pass sitting down because, you know, you do this dipping motion where you dip that top uh, packet downwards. I think that, I don't know, it doesn't flow that good when you sit down. So I like to do that when I stand up and I substitute it with other techniques when I sit down. That's just my personal preference. You do whatever works for you. Okay guys, if you liked this video and if it was helpful for you in any way, please give it a like. It really helps me out. And if you want to learn more magic, please subscribe and press that bell icon also so you get notified when I upload and upload the next part of this series as well. And if you have any questions whatsoever, I will definitely do my best best to answer them down in the comment section. I answer all my questions, so make sure to ask them if you have them. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>